There's also an untold number of people who've been arrested since March. One of the latest is an outspoken blogger named Razan Razawi, who reportedly disappeared while on her way to Jordan. A good friend of hers wrote a story about her in Monday's edition of the Guard Guardian newspaper. We'll speak with her in a moment. But first, Max Foster has more on this U.S.-born activist who's been so critical of the Syrian regime. Razam Ghazawi had actually been preparing for this day. The web and social media activist who uses a blog, Twitter, and photo sharing site Flickr had been giving her friends the passwords to her accounts so they could take them over if something happened to her. That's the picture painted on her online accounts. A tweet on her Twitter page says, in planning for her arrest, Red Razan protected her friends. She can't give them the passwords they might torture her for. Her friends plan to shut the accounts down. Her last tweets appear to have been on the first days of December. One of the last ones was about another Syrian blogger, Hussein Guerrer, who had gone missing. Hussein Guerrer is free, back to his wife and two children, back to a free Syria. Now her friends and supporters are left to use social media sites like Facebook to call for her release. And through articles from friends she has in the mainstream media. So far, there's been no word from the authorities and no information on her whereabouts. Max Foster there reporting on Razan Hazawi. We mentioned one of Hazawi's friends wrote an impassioned story about her in The Guardian. Jillian York says she met Hazawi in 2008, and she says, quote, if there is one thing that represents Hazawi more than anything, it is her belief in the power of people, not politicians, not parties, but individuals. Jillian York joins us now via Skype from Ramallah, in the West Bank. And, and Jillian, in the piece you wrote for The Guardian, uh, you said that essentially these activists, including Razan, prepare for the eventuality of their arrest by, by making sure that their accounts are shut down immediately uh, after their detention. Yeah, um, initially when Syrians were, were getting arrested earlier this year, um, they would be forced to hand over their Facebook account. And so many of them created a second uh, second account, and then the authorities caught on to that as well, demanding both of their passwords. And so now um, the strategy is to, to have somebody you trust with your password who can then shut the account down for you. And that's what happened in the case of Razan? Yeah, um, on Tuesday, um, she had given me um, her passwords, and she'd also given them to another friend, just in case. Um, and last night, uh, when we heard of her arrest, we went and, and uh, shut down some accounts and then used others to continue, um, like her Twitter account, to continue posting about um, the status of her situation. And, and Razan Ghazawi was unique in many ways, but also in, the, in, in, in that she blogged and tweeted under her own name, She's not using an alias, despite the fact that it is extremely dangerous to be openly critical of the regime in Syria. Yes, um, she did briefly uh, try to go incognito earlier this year and change to her name. Uh, but I think at that point, once once the cat's out of the bag, so to speak, it's really too late. Um, and she has, uh, you know, come back full force and been proudly using her real name. Um, and she's, you know, really just incredibly brave to do that. And we haven't heard anything from authorities, have we? about where she is? No. No, um, we know that, that the U.S. government, Razan is a US, uh, U.S. citizen. We know that the U.S. government is aware of the situation. Of course, um, it's probably unlikely that there's much that they can do. Um, but we haven't heard anything from Syrian authorities at this point. And so, I, of course, the big worry is she's in detention. Uh, the, the, she, she, the worry has to be torture. Uh, has to be the, the, the concern that she, she could be detained for a very long time. Her family must be worried, sick, and her friends as well. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't know uh, whether she was arrested for the content on her blog um, or whether she was arrested just because she was trying to leave uh, to go to this conference in Jordan. And so, um, you know, we assume that the authorities must be aware of her blog because she's so public about it. She's very easily Googleable. Um, and so the fear is that her blog will, uh, you know, create more trouble for her. Um, and at this point, you know, I haven't personally been in touch with her family, and so I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure how much they know at this point. Let me ask you, though, about one last question about her movements. She was going to Jordan. A few weeks ago, she was in Tunis for an Arab bloggers conference. She's traveled around here and there. What is the thinking on why uh, Razan was arrested now, uh, on the timing of all of this? 
Um, honestly, um, I'm not sure, and I'm, I'm, I think it's difficult to say. I mean, a lot of us have thought about this, and, you know, not as I wrote, I'm not sure uh, if anything the Syrian regime does these days necessarily uh, can be sort of comprehended over here. Um, but, you know, in this time, it, it, it might just be simply that her, the activities um, that she was traveling for in this case were directly related to Syria, whereas when she went to Tunis, it was for an Arab bloggers conference. Um, this time, she was going to meet with uh, other other people from the organization she works for, the Syrian men, uh, the Syrian uh, Center for Media and Freedom of Expression. And so it may that may have been the trigger. All right. Well, we're going to continue to follow the story of Razan Ghazawi, that uh, Syrian blogger uh, detained, we believe, in Syria on Sunday. And Jillian York has written a piece in the Guardian newspaper, as we mentioned there, about her friend. Thanks very much for joining us from Ramallah, Jillian York. You are at the International